Tired. So tired. Overtired. Hey, everybody. This is the Overtired Podcast. Hopefully, you already know that because you clicked to listen and it's not on some sort of like autoplay situation. But if it is, hi, surprise. It's me. I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm here with, with Christina Warren. And I'm here with Brett Terpstra. And I also have a lot of birds outside my window. And I refuse to take measures to block them out because I think we all we all need it. I'm coming with the birds. I I'm not birds. hearing any birds. I oh, think damn. I think you're good. I hear them through my microphone. It's lovely. You got that. You got that very directional mic. I, uh, I think. Can you, you know, hear the? You can know. you hear the mosquitoes? Because oh, holy geez. shit. Uh, really? Anyway, yeah, really bad up here. I don't I, know why. I, it's not bad. I I live in the same state as Jeff, uh, in far like two hours south of Jeff, and I gotta say, like I was just thinking yesterday, there are surprisingly few mosquitoes here. But wait, they all went so- north. Brett Terpster lives in amazing uh, in a region that has the best name ever. I think you live in the Driftless region. I do, right? And and isn't the Driftless region known for a lack of mosquitoes? I actually don't know if that's true or false. It's can, mostly just known. Can neither Terpstra. confirm nor deny. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> so, uh, there, the weird thing is, there was a period of about five years where I was immune to mosquitoes. What? I would, I would be at like a, an outdoor gathering, and everyone would be complaining about mosquitoes, and zero of them would even land on me. And if they did, they wouldn't bite. Okay, and I'm going to make light I of was something just impervious. I'm going to make light of something that I, it is, I am against making light of, but I have a feeling in this friendship and this podcast it'll work. Was it because you were sweating heroin? No, no, I'm not. I can't remember. There was something going on in my life. There was like I was eating something regularly and I can't remember what I decided the 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 X factor was on that. Um, It was during a period of sobriety. Okay, it it was neither alcohol nor heroin. Maybe it was because of whatever you were detoxing. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? It, It ended, though. I get mosquito bites now. Wait, hold on. What if DEET is short for detox? (laughs) (laughs) I think it's short for delirium tremors. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you lost your mosquito immunity because I I definitely, uh, I'm very allergic to so many bugs and and, um, also pollen and also like the sun and uh, like every type of like tree and grass blade and whatnot. But mosquitoes, really really like me they always have bugs in general so if there's anything out there like with some sort of stinger like it will find me and and it will it will bite me um i got bit by something yeah. in new york once on my um i was i was wearing the jeans that had holes in them and i was at at um uh, dinner with with a friend of mine and we were, you know, outdoors, but there were like mosquito lamps and whatnot. And she wasn't bit. And I was not only was I bit like through my um, jeans, like so like my knee wound up swelling up, but I got bit like on my ring finger and they almost had to cut my rings off. Um, They fortunately Uh. didn't. They were able to give me like a a shot of something so they could get my rings off. But like, it was one of those things where like I had to uh, like get like a pretty serious antibiotic because they were like, yeah, we're worried about how infected this could potentially be. And it's only been like 12 hours since you were bit. Um, and Jesus. like you're, 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 I don't yeah. think you should go outside. I, you're not wrong. I mean, that, this <laughs> yeah. is what I've been, I've been arguing that you're, for years. You're an, I'm indoor, an indoor child. Cat. I am absolutely <laughs> an indoor cat. 1000%. 1000%. Not even, not even one that paws at the windows. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, get me like the, you know, the blue light therapy stuff to simulate, um, you know, sunlight. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely an indoor cat. Um, I, I mean, I usually would call myself an indoor kid because that was, you know, a, sure. a, a joke That's on, on thing. reality, but honestly, I like indoor cat better. I'm, I'm going to call my, that's when we call myself now. I'm just like, Oh no, I'm an indoor cat. We don't, Great. we don't do that. We don't get ticks. <laughs> I hate oh, ticks. Tick. Oh. Anyway, let's do, uh, let's do a, a constrained mental health corner. Sounds good. Um, I can kick off. I, uh, I'm sleeping well. Uh, oh, I got. Damn, I got the I got the gabapentin up to like what is eighteen hundred milligrams, <laughs> um, which is like max dose, but right. it works. I sleep well, I wake up refreshed, um, and it's not making me drowsy all day. And I I get in for a sleep study in July. Nice. Um, so maybe I can find a way 
to sleep without a huge dose of nerve blocking drugs. Um, but yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I started Wagovi. What's um, that? It's like Ozempac. It's like it's a different it's a very similar drug to Ozempac yep. for weight loss. Um, now yeah. I have a question for you. Does yes. Oracle's health insurance cover this? Yes. Okay, that's really good to know because Apple and Microsoft and and also GitHub do not unless you have unless you've been diagnosed with diabetes like and have been issued it, they don't cover any of those drugs and it's frustrating because they claim both companies because I've talked to people um the, the reason I know about this is because somebody um, at, at Apple, um, mentioned this to me. And then I looked into it at Microsoft slash GitHub, even though we have different insurance policies, the same is for this. And I found out that even that they, they're claiming, oh, well, the science just isn't there yet, which fuck you. Yes, it is. It's been it there really for like a decade. It's, it's been there for a very long time. And when you think about like, it's just that they don't want to pay 25 grand a year or whatever it is, you know, yeah. for everybody to get them. But I'm like, think about how much more money you would save if sure. people who, could benefit from this stuff significantly have like lower cholesterol and like better heart, um, you know, um, uh, you know, like, like, um, lower blood pressure and like their, their hearts are healthier and all kinds of other benefits that come from some of this stuff. So that's really good to know that, that Oracle covers it because that I can use in my potentially, my potential crusade that me as a person who will likely never have to be on these drugs I almost feel like that makes me the perfect person to be like the public face, like to <laughs> yell at HR and, and like, be like, no, why is this not covered? You know? Yeah. By health insurance. So, Sorry, go on. I want to, yeah. I want to be careful because like health and obesity are um, widely misunderstood, even in the medical community that there are plenty of people who are obese and have great health. Yeah. Um, it's just, and there, and like, there are plenty of people who don't. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And plenty of people um, who aren't obese who have terrible. Agreed. Agreed. I'm not, but, I'm not making no, that. No, I know, yeah. but, but, but I'm just saying, of... like, like, look, like, like putting, put, put, putting like the, 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 the political aspect of it aside, there are very real health benefits that some people, not everyone, but some people can benefit from if they reduce their weight. Like it's, yeah. it, it's, it's, so, that, that's not, that's not a controversial thing. That's actually fact. So I'm going to, I'm not going to argue this. Um, I have my weight has really affected my mental health. Yeah. Um, and so my doctor agreed to put me on it and I have, I've been on it for three months now. It cost me 25 bucks a month, um, which is considering like without in insurance, it's a couple grand. Yeah. It's, a like, month. it's like, it's, it's, it's like 2000 at least. Yeah. Um, so I've been on it for, three or four months now and you slowly up your dosage and I haven't seen any weight loss yet, but here's the interesting thing. And this is, this is a known side effect. Uh, it reduces impulsive and compulsive behaviors. <laughs> um, and I, for Amazing. a long time have had a wee bit of a drinking problem uh, mm -hmm. for a couple of years now. I've been, I've been drinking a bit much. And, um, and like my desire to drink is pretty much gone at this wow. point. Like I, I can enjoy, I can enjoy like a glass of wine with dinner. That's nice. But like but you, but you can stop. whiskey, whiskey in the afternoon, which was like a favorite thing of mine. Um, not a favorite thing, but it was a habit. Um, it's like, I just, I don't, I don't do it anymore and i don't even think about it until like evening rolls around i'm like hey wow i haven't drank any whiskey today so at for 25 bucks a month even if that's the only benefit i get from it i'm i'm pretty happy i would love to lose a little weight um that would that would be good for me but also i'm working on just kind of accepting that this is what my i i get exercise i eat very healthy um, my doctor looked at my diet and the only thing he could think to change was to like reduce oil. Like I use like a tablespoon of olive oil to cook some potatoes, you know, um, I'm vegan. Otherwise, uh, I mean, that is vegan. Like 
it's just I was gonna say I don't, I, use, now I need an education. I don't use yeah. dairy based oils and I don't want to cook without oil. I know it's a no, thing like it's there's gross, a though. whole there's a whole move. Yeah, well it's and it's hard. It like is. everything sticks to your pan, nothing cooks evenly without a little bit of fat. And I also I don't believe that fat in a diet is is unhealthy. Like no. you need fat. You your body, oh, your you brain works. Yeah. on fat yeah, like yeah. fat fat and salt like we were raised to believe these were horrible health health affecting uh uh elements and they're really not and so i no. i disregarded my doctor on the oil thing i it's not like no. i'm drinking bottles of oil or anything so <laughs> well and, anyway, and th- anyway well and and no but and the thing is though like honestly i would think that probably based on what you said like the, the, what your diet is, there's either like a metabolic reason, like why maybe you've had a hard time losing weight or whatnot, or honestly, and here's the real thing, it is the alcohol, right? Like that's actually been- It's not, it's not, I've quit for two years and not lost a pound. Huh. Mm. It, alcohol, this quitting alcohol has no effect on my weight. Huh. This wow. is, my, my body went from 180 to 230 in a, like a, a one to two month period. Like it just- <sighs> It just changed with no changes in my lifestyle. It just, it went back to what it was 10 years prior before I lost weight. Right. It before just, you got into yoga like, and everything. What? Like even that, like I got into yoga because I lost weight and had more energy. I didn't really do anything to lose the weight. I started walking a couple miles a day. Uh, but like, as I lost weight, I had more energy and so I started running and then I kept losing weight. But like my body just changes its kind of like stasis weight. And right mm-hmm. now at the weight I'm at, I can for a week, I can not exercise. I can eat shitty and I don't gain weight. I, I ju- this is just the weight it wants to be. And I'm hoping the Wagobi will get me to a place where I'm more like I don't even like to go out. I feel very self-conscious, like yeah. just uh, just hanging out. There's no way, like I go to queer dance night, and there's no way I'm getting on the dance floor. I feel like such a like weirdo mm-hmm. with a because all my weight is in my belly. Um, like I don't gain. Like I have a great ass. My legs look amazing. Um, I just have this. He's actually he's showing us his ass. Right we now. are it's it, right. It, it it's looks really, really good. It's just, good. It's nice, yeah. is what I would say. It's I was nice. gonna I say. Really, nice. I was gonna yeah. say the queer the, the queer dance night crew like really needs to see Brett's ass. Well, yeah, you think about do. chaps. You ever think about chaps? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to, in two words, how would you describe my ass as you look at it? Oh, right now, yeah. Um. I would describe it as uh, well. It's funny because the word bodacious comes to mind, but I think I'm looking yeah. for a different word. Well, bootylicious is bootylicious. Like that. That's bootylicious. it. It's my brain was just yeah, mm-hmm. bootylicious. I appreciate I was that. Thinking. Thank you. I'll put yeah. I'll put I'll put my pants back up now. Okay. Um, so that's appreciate that's that. kind of my mental health corner. I will I will hand it off now. Mental health corner ends with you well, pulling your pants back on, up. Well, keep us posted on keep keep us posted on this because I I'm I'm interested in in how it works for you because I know that for a lot of people like as much. I think some of the discourse, look, I I understand if the discourse around these drugs is to be used in any way to shame people who don't want to take them for whatever reasons or whatnot, like how that can be negative. But I, I think that some of the the discourse has been really overblown and is it really overlooks the, the very real um, uh, medical benefits, again, not just you know, like physical well-being, uh, but from a mental health perspective, like, you know, yeah. you, you're things can be can, whether they should be or shouldn't be is to me completely beside the point like how we look and how uh, has a direct like correlation with how we feel so um keep us posted on this because I'm, I'm i'm happy um to i'm happy for you i hope that this this um you know can be um encouraging um and and i think if, if the interesting thing there is that if it also helps with some of like the more addictive tendencies yeah. um or compulsive tendencies like that's actually an interesting potential augmentation, mm. you know, like for these sorts of drugs, if you think about it, yeah. right? Like the the problem is as soon as you stop taking it, all of right. those behaviors come back. Like, right. and, and same with weight loss. Like as right. soon as you, 
if you ever, if your insurance changes and they won't cover it anymore and you can't afford a couple grand out of pocket, which right. who can? Like, that's, right. that's nuts. So No, it is nuts. And then everything comes back. So right. it's, I mean, it's an experiment while it lasts. Totally. Although I will say, like, I think that the more that people start to, you know, go on these drugs, the more because they're again, like the, it's what, what annoys me about like my company's response is that they're like, oh, well, we, you know, don't have, you know, the, 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 the data. And I'm like, no, the science is actually incredibly solid here. It's like 20 years yeah, worth. Like it's, it really it's is. actually, it's, it's incredibly solid. And so this is one of those things that look, maybe not everybody needs to take this forever. And maybe that, you know, there can be changes at some point where that's not possible, but plenty of people have to take supplements or have to take, you know, heart pills or, you know, antidepressants or other things all the time. I'm just hopeful that as more and more of this becomes like more, um, destigmatized, which is a good thing that I've noticed even in the last year, like the stigma around this has gone down. Um, although mm-hmm. it, it still exists in some places, which is why I'm probably gonna have to be the vocal person to speak up mm-hmm. in like my company matters, even though like I'm probably never going to be someone who takes a drug like this. Um, I'm hoping as it de- as becomes more destigmatized de- and whatnot, that it is just going to become one of those things where like the prices will come down. Um, yeah. regardless well, of, of generics the will eventually generics precise, but... precisely. Right. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully it won't be a, a bad thing. Can I give you a quick cat update before I end my mental health corner? Yes, of yeah. course. Um, so my, my cat, nobody, which we've had for a few years now, she will jump up on my desk and very carefully walk around my cords and wires every once in a while she decides to nest into like a bundle of cables and she'll unplug some shit but generally as long as she's as long she will occasionally like look for things on my desk that move and then like slowly push them to the edge until they fall off um but that's like the extent of trouble she causes our new cats richard and morris Richard has taken to hanging out on my desk, but he is just a bulldozer. Like to get on my desk, he hits the trackpad and the keyboard, has sent multiple messages to people by doing so, just bulldozes my desk, knocks, he's broken multiple coffee mugs. He is a terror and I'm not a fan of Richard. That's my update. Put him on, put Richard on. Let's, let's see what's going on with Richard. Let's have a couple. Is, of, Richard couple is questions absent. To Richard, is that able, because I saw Richard run off a minute ago? <laughs> <laughs> Bod's right here. You can't awesome. see her, but anyway. Awesome. All right, who's up? <sighs> Christina, you ready? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so I had a I had a really insanely busy week last week, which is why we didn't have a show um, because I was doing Microsoft Build stuff uh, and I, including talking to a few people from Oracle, uh, who I'm sure Brett doesn't know um, all about uh, the various partnership between uh, Azure and and um, uh, Oracle. Uh, oh, I uh, didn't even know we had that. Yeah, apparently some partnership launched like in October where you can now run like Oracle, Oracle ACI. Is that what it's called? OCI? OCI um, on Azure. Um, and so I, I talked to some people about that. Um, a contact your account managers is was the real takeaway if you wanted to be part of that, um, which which is hysterical. That, that that was, I think, the the hardest part of the partnership from what I understood was like getting all the, 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 the account managers and things like that, like on the same page. Because the idea is basically that if you have like a, an Oracle database, but you also are using multi-cloud or want to use Azure for some stuff, you can now have it hosted, I think, either on some Oracle servers or Azure servers, but yet you can run Azure services on top of it. I don't know. Anyway, I talked to Oracle people. That that's that's the, the, and I was like, I know someone at Oracle. <laughs> that's your mental health check in. That is my that, I talked to someone at Oracle. No, my mental health check in was just like I had like an insanely, insanely busy week. Um and I'm s i am I kind of recovered from that. But um that is as much as I'm like a extrovert, like there's still something incredibly draining about like being on for I don't know. I had like five 13 hour days, 13 hour plus days, like 13 hours yeah, of like the minimum in a row. And that was just like, that was a lot. But so, you survived. But I survived. I survived. Did anything go terribly wrong? That's what I'm curious about. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, you're a trooper. You yeah. get shit done. 
I mean, I try. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So just uh, that's my my kind of general update. I'm still I I'm envious of your sleeping ability because I am definitely struggling sleeping. Like I went to bed I think at at five a.m. this Jesus. morning and uh, five or six, and then I I was up by like. 8 45 or 9 15 That's so not enough sleep it's not it's not hopefully i'll be able to get some more this weekend but we'll we'll see do you get, um, do you get a little break now after that hellish grueling week uh, kind of but now like it's summer dev conference season so um like uh, wwdc is in two weeks now i'm gonna be in san jose for that um just hanging out with some folks and then i'm gonna be ironically back in san francisco like a week after that like at the end of june um for uh for a workshop um at, at some ai conference that I, I found out about um this week i was asked to do it and I, i'm now I've, the problem is that i'm happy to do the workshop but it's like three hours <laughs> um i don't think i have to do the whole three hours i think that somebody else can do like an hour and a half and i can do an hour and a half but now i have to come up with an hour and a half workshop Wow. And that's that's gonna take um a lot of time. Yeah. Jeez. Well. Wow. So woof. So yeah, so that's me. Yeah. But things are up. Th th but, but things are going up. Things are certainly better than like where I was a year ago. So um that yeah. that that that's good. So um I awesome. keep like reminding myself that it was like a year ago, like you were like actively not wanting to exist anymore and yeah. about to embark on the medication from hell like thing mm -hmm. so yep. you know small victories um so small, yeah that, that, small big victories small big victories <laughs> yeah so um i oh um uh this really doesn't fit in mental health corner but just as brief follow-up um uh, i i fucked up by buying the laptop that i bought when i bought it just back to microsoft build because the new arm like uh machines that that are the new qualcomm like processor stuff that it was announced last week these copilot plus pcs um, they look really, really good. Like I'm going to obviously wait for the final like reviews and stuff to come out, but they look really, really good. And I'm like, damn it. Why did I buy the laptop that I bought? Um, too late now, but, uh, I'm, I might wind up selling it or something, but who knows? But like, uh, that's just a little bit of follow-up for anybody who cares about Christina's alternative, um, uh, device slash operating system saga. Um, Qualcomm <laughs> does have Qualcomm does have a dev kit though, actually, which is similar to like a, a Mac Mini. It's eight hundred bucks or nine hundred bucks. I think it's nine hundred dollars, but it comes with thirty two gigs of RAM and like a super fast processor and um, good storage, and then a lot of connectivity, and it looks like a Mac Mini. So that's actually a fairly reasonable um, solution nice. for people yeah. who might want to do like on on device AI stuff. Um, or, or windows on arm stuff. So I might pick one of those, but we'll see. But anyway, that's it. I'm, I'm done. Awesome. Awesome. I, it's funny. I'm like trying to figure out. I, I don't feel like, I feel like I have like, um, heavy stuff, not heavy, like hard stuff, but just like, and, and then light stuff. And I think I'm going to go with the light stuff, which sure. is that I have, I don't even know if this is, this has its shadow side. I'm, I, I know, but, um, I've been just like taking like uh like in my kind of lunch break in the middle of the day or in the afternoon or late at night and watching just going through like mostly limited series TV shows. And um god it's been a right it's been the right time in my life to just get lost in stories and mm -hmm. uh and it's been lovely and even like we, we've had a lot of rain so I can kind of lay on this couch we have that I love and uh and just like there's a breeze and it's raining I'm watching my stories and uh, it's the most lovely thing. That sounds it's great. Awesome. Oh man, I've blown through so much. Like it's not even stuff I loved all of it, but I watched The Regime, which I loved with Kate Winslet. It's fucking insane. <laughs> I really recommend that to see her performance because it's basically like it's got a real Veep quality to it. Like there's mm -hmm. a point at which she's like, "Oh God, it smells like a pig's urethra in here." <laughs> um, I guess a lot of that kind of that, like, that was actually a pretty good impression. <laughs> There's a point at which she's like, off you fuck. And there's like some great, like, <laughs> she's amazing. It's a totally fucked up show. I watched that. I watched Masters of the Air, which like I didn't love as a character show, but I just found it fascinating to kind of like imagine my way into being a kid who's flying a bomber in World War II. And you have like 
you know, whatever crazy ass chance of surviving any given mission. Not to mention the fact that we shouldn't have been uh, bombing in those the ways that we were most of the time. Uh, that's a separate separate issue. But the problem is, who played Elvis in the Elvis movie? Um, um, uh, Ash, Austin, uh, 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 Austin. Austin, Austin um, what's his face? Yeah. So he's he plays like the main character, but it's I don't know if he was fucking filming Elvis as he filmed this, but I could not stay in the movie because every time he come on, he was like, "Yeah, no, we're gonna fly. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna, we're gonna fly this mission, and we're all just gonna be fine." And it was like so incredible how he did not shed Elvis either that or he just is that person. Um, what else? I'm watching Dark Matter uh on on apple tv and and i love that and then the, i finished one other one i can't remember the, even the name but uh anyway just going through them and like i kind of love limited series that they aren't all limited series but most of those are right um i just love that feeling like when it's over you're not like oh fuck i gotta wait two years it's just a right. nice satisfying feeling like when you close the book at the end of reading um so anyway that's been that's been nice to do uh, unless, it relates unless it's, big, unless it's big little lies and then they're like oh it's limited series oh, which wait, i well, never we're gonna watched come back. yeah uh, right. well, the first the first season is actually incredible the second season not as good um even though they have meryl streep honestly because like the author of the book had to like write the script like no one was expecting to, to do it again it's just <laughs> it was such a huge success they're like oh we have to make more of this sorry i didn't mean to cut you off <laughs> no oh and the other one i watched what is it called it's the apple tv show with colin farrell um that takes a really ridiculous turn in the last three episodes, but he's basically like a, a like LA noir type character. And I loved, I love watching detectives more than I love watching journalists in movies, but I like it for the same reason. Um, and he is, I loved his style of being a detective. It was like, I loved it almost like close to how much I loved Columbo, but I wouldn't compare the two because Columbo is just a massive, incredible thing that Wait, <laughs> that was what created. Was the, what was the Colin Farrell one called? <sighs> What's it called? It's recent. Uh, it's Colin Farrell. <laughs> and also the woman that was in The Wire, who was a cop in The Wire for a season out on the out on the docks. I hope somebody's searching it because I'm being lazy. I'm, I'm looking right now. Okay. But first of all, Colin Farrell. Um, Sugar? Sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. I loved it. I, I hated the turn it took, but I loved it. Um, and Colin Farrell also just has features that are like my brother. And so I, I like watching him, but anyway, that's all. That was nice. But it leads me to uh, on our, on our sort of agenda here in our, in our show notes. Uh, I had one really stupid thing I wanted to say, and it, it fits right in with this. And I just need to say it out loud. Cause my kids are just tired of hearing me observe shit like this. I fucking hate CGI headlights. <laughs> So like I'm picturing I was watching the regime and it's happened in Masters of the Air too, where it's like an overhead shot and there are cars driving, but like the headlights are obviously CGI and, and it looks so dumb. It almost looks half the time like they're disconnected and it's making you guys making me crazy. It pulls me out of the story. I'll tell you what it does. I have Off no idea what you're talking about. I've never I, I totally noticed do. this before. You know what you're talking about, Christina? Yeah, I, do. I don't know. I mean, it's just fucking, I can't stop seeing it and it's probably not even always real, but huh. it makes me crazy. That's all. Now, I really now, now I'm gonna see. I it. felt like this was a safe space, and I could. No, it totally is. I it doesn't. Those don't bother me as much, but there are some things like that that have the same effect. Where like it'll take smoke, a bit. breath, just smoke is, all of that too. Smoke is one of those that that bothers me. Breath, breath. Yeah. Um, you don't see as much. Um, although when you see it, it's almost always like painted in. Um, yeah, and it's point. like the mouth is here, but why is it anyway? Right, yeah. totally. And you're like, you're like. I understand. You can't that, fool a Minnesotan. Well, I was going to say, I, I was like, I understand that you're filming this in Atlanta where it is never cold enough to actually capture someone's breath. However, you know, right. and you're trying to like look like you're, you know, so much, some place much colder. But um, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it on this show or not, but uh, it's not a limited series, although um, it, I guess it'll come back next year. Um, who knows how long you'll have to wait, but, but, I, but I think it still fits kind of that vibe or whatnot. Fallout on Amazon. Oh, absolutely, yeah, that's next a, for me absolutely the best show i've seen this year probably like in, awesome. in a couple years like awesome even if you've never played the games um yeah. i think that you'll like it but like i i loved the games and i was really concerned that they were going to fuck up the tone of that show uh because the the tone is crucial to the whole thing oh my and god not, and and they nailed it on every fucking level the casting is fantastic they they kind of to your point about the cgi stuff like they use some of that but a lot of what they did was actually like practical effects like yeah, that's great like, like they, they they went to certain locations you know to get some of the expanse of uh, like they went to nairobi or something i think to to shoot 
some of the stuff to kind of like look like like the the, the wasteland and kind of like you know a, a desert and um you know they did more practical effects um uh for other things too so i um i, I think you'll like it it's really really awesome good. awesome that's great I want to, I want to watch it so bad. I have an ambient experience of fallout because both of my boys played it a ton mm-hmm. and I just loved hearing it being played. Obviously yeah. the music, but also just everything. The music's unbelievable. And it's just. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah, and, and they, they nailed it. It was one of those things I was really, I was optimistic, uh, especially when I saw their um, installation at South by Southwest, which was a really, really good uh, installation. Like they recreated like the wasteland and they kind of had like a carnival sort of experience and they had actors hired to kind of play, you know, denizens, um, you know, in, in, in the TV show, um, and, uh, kind of, kind of world. And, um, I, I was impressed enough with how that was, cause it was a really clearly a very expensive installation and it was something that, that worked really well, but I was like, okay, if they put enough into this, the thought, the thought just for this, I'm hopeful, especially, you know, after we've seen some of the previews that the show will be good, but then Amazon did stupid shit. Like they kept changing the release date. They wound up, you know, moving it up a few days and then they released all the episodes at once. And so that makes you think, okay, well, are they trying to burn this off? And no, they weren't. The reviews were universally like incredibly positive. Um, And then, which, which like, you know, people were comparing it, you know, to, to the last of us and, I think God, which I haven't watched, which is great. And, and, yeah. but, but that's a much easier thing to adapt in my opinion, because that has, yeah. that was a, that was a game that was basically designed like a prestige TV series, whereas right. fallout because it's self-determined, they had to create whole new characters, but to still live kind of in that universe. And so, and then you have to nail the tone. The tone is a much harder thing to nail in fallout. And so the stakes in my opinion were a lot higher, but I was hopeful. I was like, okay, well the West world people are behind this and, and like, you know, um, the, the actors they got involved were good and i was hopeful but you never know right like video game adaptations are usually awful or you Um, know you know that it's a good chance it's gonna suck (laughs) correct and and in this case and then when they drop it all at once you're like okay well do you not believe in this and then no it was fantastic and it's like broken all kinds of amazon records and they've already renewed it for a second season but i I, the only thing i i think that amazon fucked up with that was that they'd released it like week to week like i think that a lot more conversation would have built about it yeah. So, anyway, oh, cat in the gr- yeah. Hi, cat. Oh, which that's Richard. He's Hi, knocked Richard. it over. Awesome. He managed yeah. to not hang up this call. So much TV. I love it. I, it really relaxes me. I mean, it, it, oh, when yeah. it does. When it does. <laughs> I like. Yeah. The so the idea of like rain and stories like oh. that is that's a that's a real happy place for me. I open right. the yeah, windows. I love that. Listen to a soft rain while I get. Uh, uh lost i guess is i think the word you use yeah just to get lost in a story and 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 those limited run tv series tend to be really well written yeah and to like a well written they're the ones you want to go on (laughs) yeah well it's like i get part of me is like the film critic appreciating like oh that was really well written and part of me is just like enveloped in the story and i love that Especially yeah. from the to wrap the mental health part of that up, uh, especially when you're stuck in your own stories, <laughs> to right. like yes. get into somebody else's well, is a I huge fall relief. Thing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I, I fall asleep at night listening to audiobooks, and it God, usually involves a lot of. Dreams. It it well, I like it. I like. I, mean, I, I like it too. I, I'm saying. I sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on. Well, I'm really into this author Jeremy Robinson right now, and I have literally read uh 20 to 30 of his books the dude writes a book like every three months and he is adhd and his he comes up with fucking stories and premises that i find myself trying to explain what's happening in a story to l and just realizing how absolutely bonkers it is um and i love the way the guy's brain works so i fall asleep listening to his stories it leads to fuck up fucked up dreams but it gets me out of my own head um yeah just like and and i rewind like every morning i rewind to the point where i fell asleep because i don't want to miss anything um right. but yeah like stories get me out of my own stories and in the and in the right context it's not escapism it's rest you yeah. know like for me, at least. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. Cause like, 
all of us uh, on this pod, I mean, this was one of kind of the, the genesis for for the original iteration of Overtired a decade ago, um, was uh, which I think actually happened like in June of, of, of 2014, if I recall correctly, Brett. I don't we were, do dates. Well, yeah, because we were at WWDC, but anyway, mm. um, um, but like, it, is that like our brains don't shut off? At least yeah. mine doesn't, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so getting lost in someone else's story to your point, like I, I kind of love that, like is kind of a way in some ways of, of, at least for me anyway, like shutting off my brain, right. I can focus on this, you know, fictional story or a uh, historical yes. novel or whatever. I can focus on this other thing and not have to think about all the other stuff um, that, that my brain won't shut up about. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, that's probably now, if, now that I'm verbalizing this, that was probably part of my, um, a, attraction to journalism to a certain extent in addition to it being very good for like an adhd person it's also one of those things where you can compartmentalize and can kind of you know focus on this thing that like doesn't directly sometimes it does directly affect you but many times like it doesn't right so it's like okay i can i can be in this world yeah you know reading yeah. about this stuff or listen you know listening to an audiobook or watching a tv show and i can get lost in that instead of yeah all the the the, the you know nascent like the never-ending discussion of my brain for sure, for sure. I uh, I I put a link to Jeremy Robinson's uh, kind of website. Beware of monsters. Oh, so if nice. you're looking, if you're looking for bonkers sci-fi, bonkers fantasy, uh, he's all over Audible. Like you'll never run out of stories if you okay. just want some crazy shit to fall asleep to. Awesome. Um, okay, okay, all right. We are what halfway through. Um. I got one stupid thing I want to bitch about. Yeah. Yeah, please. So so I run the GitHub organization for DevRel at Oracle. And we have always, we, like, we fought long and hard to get a, a relaxed security license for our DevRel repos so that every repo didn't have to go through a whole, a whole list of, like, legal and corp arch and approvals left and right which you do need to get onto the main oracle if you want to build a repo but our repos were just they're like sample code they're examples they're short like some of them are just readme files that they want to publish without going through like a content management system um so we tried to keep it super lightweight uh we we have a whole securities procedure called ossa light um and it was working great until uh, this week, we got assigned. We now have to go through this Jira ticket. You have to clone this Jira ticket to request a new repo. And this Jira ticket has 13 sub tickets, including legal authorization, corp arch approval, export compliance approval. And like everyone who wants to request a repo, it used to be a 15 minute process. Um, I would ask them a series of questions to ensure that they fit our requirements for a category three repo. I would make the repo assign them as maintainers done. Now it is a one to two week process from 15 minutes to two weeks to get a new repo. And it, it sucks. Uh, I hate it, but also it turns out like Corp Arch was considering shutting us down because we were operating as like a rogue a rogue GitHub organization within Oracle. Right. So this was <laughs> this was a necessary step to to sure. maintain our to maintain Security. our like independent. Yeah. Right. Um, like and, and my, for you to be able to not be shut down, but man, what a pain in the ass. My manager, not my manager, but my like my M6, like my manager's manager, um, asked me to research what companies like Microsoft have as far as like repo creation requirements. And I don't, I, that's not your area, Christina, but it's not, but I can, I can find out. I don't know what all is public. Um, l- I, let me find out actually what is public in terms of the Microsoft stuff for GitHub. It's, it's, look it, it's github so it's the the requirements are going to be different than other places yeah but in microsoft wanna... um we I, there is a process but i think it comes through the open source programs office i let me see how much is public so what i can share with you 
um, yeah. because there is a process. Um, and and I, they've built some actually pretty good automated tooling around some of that stuff too, because Microsoft, um, and this predates the GitHub acquisition by like years and years, like there are still a couple of um, things that might be in, in some other places, but for the most part, like most of the company code is on GitHub. And so they have yeah. fairly automated like processes in terms of, and Which obviously is why that's it made things. total sense when Microsoft bought GitHub. I'm like, they're, they're good citizens of GitHub. I had high hopes and it, it, they haven't failed me yet. Knock on wood, man. Knock on wood. All right. That was my one stupid thing. What do you guys want to talk about? Can I bitch about something real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one stupid thing corner. Okay. <laughs> so, right. so months, months and months ago, we talked about how I bought the, the car thing from Spotify um, which, uh, is, was this, uh, thing that they, at, at one point they sold it for $90. I think I got it for 20 or 30, um, when they discontinued it. Um, and basically it was just this, uh, this thing that you could connect to your car or, um, I used it connected to a computer through like the USB-C cable, but it also had like a, a mounting system and basically would pair to your phone and act as like a, a controller for, um, Spotify. Um, and it was, designed for cars that that didn't have you know like in car systems and whatnot and it didn't have a touch screen but like the the display was really um, high quality and it had a really nice little kind of uh, scroll um wheel where you could kind of uh, control you know volume and, and change playlists and things like that really great design anyway um they discontinued it and i got mine cheap and i was like oh i can i'll connect this to my desk and and granted there are other apps i can use as a spotify controller it's superfluous in some ways but it was a fun little toy well, Spotify has decided that they are going to um, end of life it in December, and they're not going to open source anything with it. They're just going to brick everybody's devices. They're just uh, going to brick. Uh, they're just going to brick everybody's devices. And now uh, there's bullshit. been enough. There's been enough of an outcry that um, I guess some people can get refunds if they email them or whatever. Um, and there might even be a class action suit around it. But it's just so frustrating because. There's they're, they're claiming Spotify's claiming oh we want you know to cut I guess our support burden or whatnot but I'm like hey you didn't sell that many of these things to the point that you had to close them out for a third of the price and and most people who bought these things were enthusiasts and I understand that open sourcing things is uh you know a, a difficult task and like I'm not saying that like I necessarily even ex expect them to do that although it would certainly be nice um mm -hmm. but um. I think, and I don't have any proof of this. This is just my own like independent conspiracy theory. I think I know why they're doing this. And, and, and if this is the reason, this makes me even more angry. So Spotify recently introduced a new font. Um, it's very similar to the font that they were oh, man, paying for before. I did before. not expect it to go there. Okay. Okay. No, no. Right? Well, he, hear, hear me out. Well, hear me out. Okay. So they, they, they introduced a new, a new font that they own. They previously had been licensing a font that someone else made and because of uh all the places they exist on web and other stuff, their licensing fees, I bet were extraordinary because I don't think that they had a perpetual agreement. I think that it was one of those things where they were probably having to pay like per device, per API, whatever. Anyway, they, they designed and, and they, they said as much like when they did their big outline document of like why they created their own typeface. I think because this thing, you know, is older um, because it's from a couple of years ago, they don't want to obviously introduce the engineering resources to like issue an update to, you know, update like the, the, the firmware or anything else on it. So, but they also probably don't want to have to pay the licensing for any of these things that are still in use. So my theory is, and again, this is unproven. I could be completely full of shit. And if you work at Spotify and no, please let me know um, on Mastodon, or you can email me Christina at Christina.is. I will keep it confidential. Um, uh, like, unless you say that, uh, you know, sources close to the situation can say, anyway, I'm just curious if I'm wrong though, I'm, I'm happy to correct the record, but I have a feeling that they're doing this just because they don't want to pay some font licensing bullshit and like, fuck you, Spotify, like genuinely, like this was a fun little toy. And for the people who actually do use it in their cars, which is not me, you've now like made their listening experience significantly worse. Um, they, uh, yeah, they sent me an email last week that says, we're reaching out to get, um, out, out to you given your use of our car thing product. As we've shared, Spotify has made the difficult decision to discontinue car thing on December 9th, 2024. This was not a decision we made lightly, and we want to ensure that you have the right place to reach out if you have any questions. Our customer support team can reach through the link below. And if I contact them, apparently I can get my $30 back. But like, fuck uh, off. Yeah. Like, yeah. what a shitty move. Anyway, that's my bitching. 
Um, I I love I, this conspiracy theory. I'm putting I, I put links to both Circular, their old font, which they were licensing, and their uh-huh. new font, which has the really stupid name Spotify Mix. Yes, that's not what you call a font. That's what you call a Spotify Mix. Um, my I I'm gonna renew my my Spotify bitch. Um, hey, you know what we're doing? Ingratitude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Love it. So I don't I. There is a long thread on the Spotify support site about this, um, and I've but, talked but, but, about it before. Yeah, but about but, but your, uh, your, your crashing thing, right? Well, it's not crashing. It's just if I play Spotify from my Mac on Sonoma, about every 15 seconds, it drops out audio for about four seconds. Um five seconds since we're since we're we're estimating here. But like <laughs> it makes it impossible to listen through spotify on my mac so oh same I, I have the same problem and on the home pod and same what problem. i end up doing is i play spotify on my phone and then i set the speaker to my mac and it works fine and then i can control spotify from my mac but it's playing via my phone and it is it is a workaround it's a pain in the ass um sometimes i just use bluetooth connectivity because i get a better audio signal that way um but and sometimes I push it to the echo that's connected to my uh, Mac sound system through a, a complete complete six. Anyway, I have a lot of options. I will say um, I recently added a Klipsch uh, R100 SW 10 inch subwoofer to my Mac's audio. And you combine that with all of my dancing lights, and it is the perfect um, uh, overstimulation. When when my ADHD is craving stimulation, I now can like vibrate the room while all of the lights in the room dance to the music, and it is fucking nuts. nice. Nice, I love it. But I can't I just... do it. I can't do it with Spotify on my Mac. I got to do it from my phone. And they Spotify is not responding. This this thread has been going since early twenty or late twenty twenty three, and they have not responded. They have not uh, offered any solutions. Dude, they were working on that font. Sure, sure. <laughs> you got you got priorities, right? But I'm I'm not alone. This is happening to multiple people. I've done all the things: uninstall, reinstall, clear caches lower bit rates like i've done everything and it just it's so fucking stupid. it just needs a wash maybe i should try it on my um laptop can i um can i make a proposal my proposal without you voting is um is that i do an ingratitude which bridges into graptitude sure sure okay here comes my ingratitude so uh for the the business I'm part of the collaborative. We have like all of the software, obviously we're a business um, that we use and all of these subscriptions and apps and services. And I've been going through all of them um, to just kind of audit our permissions and, and just kind of look at logs and see how we're using them or if we're using them, but also make sure that it's like we're using it the right way. And, and maybe we want like the higher plan or whatever it is. Right. I, uh, this work is so slow because nobody has figured out a good way to handle user permissions, moving to two-factor authentication or any kind of pass key or anything like that. It's the wild fucking West because obviously, and I just wish someone out there had some best practices. I don't know how you create them, but I God damn have not found a single interface where I'm like, well, that's well laid out. Right. I, I feel like I've, I know I've done all the right things right now and I can move on. It's more like, well, let me fucking click here. It's like when you, every time I get a new iPhone, I just click through every single setting and, and realize, holy fuck, look at all this shit you can do, but it's like 20 fucking clicks in. Yeah. Right. It was like that for every one of these. It took me so many hours. I'm not done. It's like, it's insane. So anyway, that's my ingratitude that no one's getting that right. My yeah. favorite thing about iOS settings is that Apple looked at that fucking mess and said, let's bring that to the Mac. <laughs> exactly. And in Sonoma, they made the settings as convoluted exactly. as they are on iOS. And yeah, yeah. 
That's and they changed, amazing. I think they changed some of the, like the way the global prefs are written. So it's even harder to do some of the things that you used to be able to do from the command line uh -huh. to kind of set your global preferences. I think some of that changed because when I was setting up a computer a few months ago, I found some of those things that had always worked don't work anymore. I can is tell that you, true? In the process of developing Bunch, it used to be a simple Boolean to turn notifications or like um, do not disturb on and off. It was a simple Boolean yeah. uh, defaults command. Now you have to read a dictionary, a binary dictionary from preferences, decode it, change a flag, recode it, and apply it uh, like three levels deep in wow. a preference setting, in like a preference dictionary. And it is um, super hacky to do something that used to be like one simple terminal command. Yeah. Um, and now, and part of it's because they added all of the, what are they called? The different do not disturb modes. Um, right. Which are awesome. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, and so I have it, an amazing one that just lets in my family when I want. I sure. Love that. So it had to get more complex, but now the, the real way to do that is using shortcuts instead of terminal commands and shortcuts. Yeah. Shortcuts is cool. It's no fine. complaints. Yeah, I have a complaint. I mean, shortcuts is it's like okay, now I'm fucking oh. bloop did bloop did bloop did bloop okay. rather than so, you know. Yeah, what I'm I mean, <laughs> I I recently made a shortcut for converting NB Alt RTF files into Markdown for importing into something like NB Ultra or Obsidian. Yeah, um, because NB Alt is dying. Uh, there are a lot of people who can no longer run it, and NV Ultra is still in fucking beta, mm -hmm. um, private beta, no less. I, we really should just make it public. But yeah. Um, anyway, so I wrote this to to help save you know some some older users' notes, and it made me realize shortcuts is if you want to do anything more complex than like turn on this do not disturb mode what are yeah. they called there's a i'm forgetting the word for like the profiles in there yeah. but um but yeah like shortcuts is not easy to work with um i don't i honestly automator i just i ever i only ever use it to run shell scripts um and that was it was great for that and and shortcuts can do that uh even better Shortcuts are amazing. And for me, it feels like the difference between uh, working with a static site or trying to put something together in Squarespace. That's like how, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, like that's kind of how it feels. And I just get annoyed. At oh, that. that's but actually I, that's a perfect analogy. Yeah. 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 So, OK, so we got it. We got to do gratitude. Jeff has to take off in seven yep. minutes. Great. I've got one. Um, <laughs> Go for so it. We, we can, OK, so mine is uh, is, is Kino, which is uh, a new uh, video app from the uh, Halide. I think that's how you say it, folks, uh, Ben and Sebastian, um, who uh, who make uh, Halide is one of the best um, uh, camera apps for iOS. And I'm going to go with Halide. Hey, lied. Okay. I have no idea. And, and I've said it wrong before. I, I I thought that it was pronounced a different way. And I was trying to remember how Ben pronounced it. So we'll say that. Hey, lied. Um, but anyway, uh, if you go to uh, Lux.camera, I think already the price has gone up to $20. Um, it was $10 for its first couple of days in release, but it's a, it's a one-off purchase, but basically they, um, it's a, if you do any sort of like pro video stuff, basically it lets you, uh, it's very similar in some ways to the black magic app uh black magic camera app except this has a lot of pre-built in like filters for for color grading and things like that so that you don't have to be a pro to do it you can do it kind of in camera so you can record things in apple log if you've got some of the newer cameras and apply um certain effects automatically and, and instantly grade things um and it also has a bunch of other really great um, uh, features and, and like, you know, you can open various LUT files and, and things like that. Um, so, uh, it, it has a feature called, um, 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 auto motion where it'll basically choose the best, the best exposure setting, like for whatever motion blur, um, it, it's, it's accomplishing and it's doing that, uh, without using AI or computational photography, um, uh, uh, they they say on their on their site like it's a practical effect which which I appreciate but um, <laughs> nice. anyway it, it's a, I haven't had a chance to really go in depth with it uh, but especially if you have one of the newer iPhones 
um, and and you're interested in in like a, a pro app, especially since like filmic when filmic died and did its you know uh, well yeah it died because it sold to that company that bought Evernote and and buys things just oh, to to ruin yeah. it. Um, yeah. filmic was a really great app for many, many, many years. And, um, now, uh, Kino is, is an option and, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, uh, Seb and, and, and Ben are fantastic people and, um, I'm, uh, love to support indie devs and, um, as a 1.0, like I know that they had to rush to get this out and stuff, but, um, and, and it's hard as hell for them to do a lot of the things that they do because of how the camera APIs work and because of the various different cameras across different devices. So even if you don't have one of the newer phones, um, you can still use this app, but obviously the the newer phones can take advantage of some of the features even better. But uh, yeah, Kino is my pick. I, I, I'm uh, it's like, we talk a lot and, and joke a lot about like pro apps, you know, for like iOS or iPad OS. This is actually yeah. one of those apps is actually like a fucking pro app for, for your phone. So <laughs> this looks very cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, my pick, I'm going to keep it short, is Fish, the friendly interactive shell. Yeah. Um, I switched. I was a longtime Bash user. When Mac OS switched to Z Shell, Z Sh, as its uh, default um, shell, I, I tried getting into Z Shell. And Z Shell is very cool. There's a lot you can do. But at the same time, I started hearing about Fish. So I gave it a shot. It was a bit of a um learning curve yeah there was a sh there was a, <laughs> a shock to it um but once you get used to it like the scripting is so much easier and smarter than bash or z shell scripting um a more natural language and less symbolic um the completions are fucking the completions amazing are great it tell it, it remembers completions per directory so when you change into a project and you type the first letter of a command you usually run in that project, it'll offer you a completion for that project, not your last command that started with that letter. Um, and you wow. can you can just hit the right arrow and accept a command. And uh, the syntax highlighting of your 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 command line is like as you type. Uh, if it's a valid command, it turns green, and then it it syntax highlights all of your options and everything. The completions are like auto generated from man pages. It can complete just about any command. And like I type SSH and it will complete anything in my config file, any uh, alias that I've set up. And yeah, it's it's awesome and I recommend it. Um, that's my that's my gratitude. Awesome. That's great. Um, I've tried fish. It's been a while, but, but I, I remember liking it now. Um, I think you might've told me how I could do this, but remind me like if I, if I need to run a bash script or, or, oh, or yeah. a Z shell you, script, like you as can long still as do it, that. As long as it has a hash bang at the top, it, it'll just load it in that shell. Like I run bash scripts in fish all the time. Okay, cool. Awesome. I know. I remember when you really got into fish and you were just writing shit for it all the fucking time. I was like, I want to do fish. And I'm like, you know, I've, <laughs> I've tried to follow Brett in the past down these threads and I find I should just maybe pause because uh, um, uh, I'm not Brett. <laughs> <laughs> I will say um, I, I'm looking at their, their homepage now um, for the first time in a long time. And I don't know if it's always been this way. Uh, maybe it has, but um, th the fact that they use comic sans as the font, I know, I know is fucking honestly, it's actually great. <laughs> 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 yeah that is um, impressive yeah their documentation is amazing uh they have if you run the help command it'll load up uh the documentation in your web browser um you can also add it as a dash doc set um yeah it's their documentation is great their homepage is fucking ridiculous but it is ridiculous. Brett, did you ever tell me you wrote something somehow for for making it easy to create custom dash docs? Yeah. yeah, I made you one did? that I knew converts. It. Like I just did one for the first time and I was like, this is insane. Brett yeah. has to have fixed this. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah can he just, did. I, you can just write doc sets in Markdown. Uh, uh, that's and, your deal? You make yeah, this happen? And my tool. Fucking well, stuff. it uses a gem that was published by capelli or whatever yeah um he he made a a gem that uh creates doc sets from a uh basically a ruby document uh it's a uh 
what do you call it when you write your own language an as dsl domain specific language right um so it's a very simple syntax but i made one that converts from markdown to that simple syntax and then uses the gem to create a doc I didn't set. even want to search it because I wanted to ask you here. <laughs> um, I love that. So my graphitude, well, one is just that when you said Kino, I initially, I immediately thought of Kinopio, which is, the, I, it's the most delightful little uh, browser based mind mapping app. It's adorable and, and it's wonderful. And I just want to just remind the whole world that it exists. Um, and then, uh, and then the other piece is like, so this is so silly. Like my link in the show notes is to a thing from 2006, but it's a feature in Firefox that I've never actually encountered or noticed, which is that when you create a bookmark and you go in to edit it, you can create a keyword that just mm -hmm. calls that bookmark in the, I do <laughs> the that address all line. the time. I never fucking saw it until this week. And I was just like, my whole life has changed. Well, and for sites you go to regularly, you, you can make your keyword just one letter. Yes. So if I type O and hit enter, it goes to overtiredpod.com. It's great. If I, great. Type, if I type C and hit enter, it loads up my uh, local uh, Synology uh, oh, awesome. admin. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So anyway, that's like, it's such a stupid little thing, but it's funny how features can escape you or me, maybe at least for ever. Because mm. again, I just linked to something from 2006. That's like, how <laughs> cool are custom keywords? <laughs> so anyway. All right. Always learning. Right. Jeff, we're getting you out of here on time, more or less. Yeah. Great. I love you guys. Great to talk to y'all. Yeah. Great. Get some sleep. Get some sleep, right. everybody. Get some sleep. The system Bye. is going down low.